The question says that we have to generate continuous forecast. We have to forecast the revenue for a certain target over the next quarter for a certain company. Now, there are three parameters that are given to us. N, which is the number of days. Total revenue target, the target revenue, which is X, Y, Z. Or third parameter that we are given is day one revenue. How would you build a function to return a list of daily forecasted revenue starting from day one to the end of the quarter? My name is Ravi. I'm currently a senior engineer at a man company. I have worked across through a couple of man companies. I've uh, been at several positions related to software engineering, including core software engineering, data engineer, and several. That's essentially what we are going to do. Now, when you think about this question, I would say that this is a very good question as far as the coding round goes uh, for a data engineer, even for a data scientist very well. This is a pretty good question to judge their coding skills, to judge their problem solving skills, their knowledge of data structures and algorithm, and uh, very well applicable to the domain of uh, data, to the data domain, uh, to the actual work that they are supposed to. With all of that clarity, let's head directly over to the question. Think of it as a normal problem, as a mathematics problem, let's say, that we first have to take into account the parameters which are given to us. Well, we have this number of days, that's definitely a parameter. And we have a target that we have to meet. It's something like you are given that that's the end goal. This is the starting position. And you have X number of days or N number of days to complete that. How would your forecast look like essentially? We have to build a function which returns a list of daily forecasted revenue. So essentially daily, what our revenue would look like. It will be a list that's the expected output. Pay attention here, list of daily forecasted revenue. So the expected output is in the form of a list. That's what we have to return. So if you think about it, um, a very important note or a very important thing about the question which is highlighted here is that just expect that it will have it will be continuous linear growth. There will not be like uh, some days small, some days, uh, you know, it, it falls short, some days it goes high. It will be a continuous linear growth. That's the assumption that we have to make. Practicality is slightly different, but in the domain, in the paradigm of this question, that's the assumption that we are making. So first, what we have to do, think about calculating the average daily growth. Now, when you think about it, what is the average daily growth which is required to reach that target? How you can do this is you can think about uh, dividing the difference between the target revenue and the revenue on the number of days. Uh, sorry, day one. What I'm trying to suggest, get the difference. Let me write it like this. The difference between target, and when I said difference is target, minus the first day revenue, that will be the difference. So that's the total width that we have to achieve. And we have to divide this by number of days. And that will give you, what this will give you will be the average daily growth. Remember, we have to take an assumption, it's a continuous linear growth. Particular operation will give you the average daily growth. And now once you have that average daily growth, what you have to do essentially, iterate through each of the days, like day one to day n, n number of days. That's what we, have, we are given. And we have to keep on adding the average daily growth. It should be a continuous addition. That means the day one revenue, and it will keep on adding the average daily growth. And remember, this average daily growth, we calculated it from this expression. So we will keep on adding this in a continuous fashion, in an iterative fashion, I would say. And we will put all of the results at each iteration, the value that we get, we will put that into a list. And that will be the list that we will return finally, because the expected answer is to return a list of daily forecasted revenue. That's the expectation. So that's the intuition behind this question, that's how, that's the algorithm that we utilize. If yet not clear to you, as I write the code, as I explain while writing the code, this will become uh, pretty clear. So how this looks like is first, as I said, we have to get this average daily growth. I will just use a relevant variable name. And this is also a very important factor in your interviews that the variables that you use, try to use very relevant variable names. This shows, definitely gives a good impression to the interviewer. It shows your standard program practices, your best programming practices, your alignment towards the best programming practices. The average daily growth is what we have to first calculate. The pseudocode, I already provided it here. So we have to get the difference. So difference will be target minus this day one revenue. That's what we have. So difference minus day one revenue, that will give us the difference. We have to divide that. Usually what you will do is you will divide this by N. Isn't it? I mean, we discussed this just now that get the difference, divide that with the number of days. And what is the number of days given to us? Well, it's N. So 
what you would do is you will go and divide it by n. One very important thing that you have to note is you have to do a division by n minus 1. Why is that? Because what you are doing is this day one revenue, what you are taking is inclusive. It's not exclusive. That's why you are not doing just directly by n. You are doing n minus 1. So it is inclusive. That is why the number of days, it does not start from, I would say, 0 like an array, if that makes sense. We are actually starting from the first day itself. So that's inclusive already. So that's why we do an n minus 1 here. Now that we have got the average daily growth, the next step that we discussed, iterate, iterate over the number of days while iterating, get the forecast for each day, add that list. That's what we discussed. That means that I have to first declare a list, I would say. So let me declare a list called daily forecast. That's the list. That's my resultant list. Now I have to start my iteration. So what I will do, I will start the for loop iteration. So for D in range, uh, and as I said, again, the inclusiveness comes into picture here. I am starting from day one. So this should be one. All right. We are starting from day one. And remember in Python, the for loop, the range function, I should say, second parameter in the range function, it's exclusive. So that's why in this case, n plus one. So that's the for loop, or I would say the range over which we have to iterate. What do we have to do? Get particular value for each day, get the forecast for each day, I should say. So I would get that into another variable and I would call that forecasted revenue. And then what I would do is the day one revenue, what I have, I will add that the particular day and, and the average daily growth. That's what we have got here. So that particular day, so that will be counted by this day minus one. Again, the inclusiveness feature, remember that the first day we have already accounted for. So this particular variable that what we are getting is the particular day we are looking for. Okay. That particular day into the average daily growth. One thing which I didn't highlight earlier, it's not just simply adding that average daily growth, but it is getting that average daily growth for which particular day we are taking into account. So actually multiplying that with that particular day, the day one revenue, and then that particular day multiplied with the average daily growth. That's what we are getting. And this essentially will give us the entire forecast for that particular day. That's the crux. That's the core part of the algorithm. Make sure you address that make sure you understand that just for explanation in case you are still not clear so what i will again i will highlight because this is the core part of this question what are we doing essentially that for each day what we are doing is we are calculating the forecasted revenue and this is the formula for that in fact let me complete the formula this will be average daily growth so this day minus one let me highlight this again this day minus one this adjusts for zero indexed days so what do i mean by that i already highlighted it's inclusive this day one revenue is for day one. So it's already accounted for. So that is where we do this minus one. And this average daily growth, it calculates how much revenue increases each day to reach this particular target, to reach this XYZ. That's the formula. That's the explanation of this formula. This day minus one, the same thing which we have done for this N minus one, essentially. Why do we do, do this N minus one? Because the number of days minus one, we have already accounted for the first day. This day one revenue is already taken into account. Important thing, that's why I'm highlighting this again. Let me make a move from here. Then. So now that we have got this formula in place, the next thing that we have to do is now that we have got the forecast revenue for that particular day, just add it, just append it to your list. So we have got, we got this list that we declared already and we can use the append function in Python. Actually, append function will add that particular value, which we, whichever we provide to the append function, it will add it to the end of the list. And what do we want to add? Well, the forecasted revenue. Great. This loop should take care of building our list, which essentially we have to return. This is the list which contains the daily forecasted revenue for each day starting from day one until the nth day. N plus one because the for the range function second parameter is exclusive. And finally, what we can do is we can return this daily forecast list that we have built. So this looks good to me. Just doing a quick sanity check. Everything looks good. I think before I run this, I will again apply some test programming practices. And what I will do, I will cover some edge conditions. And one of the edge conditions, which I can clearly see is, hey, what if the number of days which is given to us is zero? In that case, we should be able to handle it. And I will say, hey, raise an exception, raise a value error. I will handle it. Again, a best programming practice and pass on a relevant message that number of, let's say, I will say that number of days of uh, n actually the number of days n must be positive that's what i will say so i will say the number of 10 now days must be positive fair enough i think this is a good enough thing the reason i'm doing this by the way is well in this case you are doing a division and if we do not make sure we check this it will result result in a very bad exception with your program divide by zero exception 
which is pretty pretty nasty so all this looks good let's try to run our code all test cases pass good work this looks like it will work but then i think i can see a particular difference here in the expected output and what my code produces it passes for this one fair enough but i think it might fail let me try to submit the solution i see some test cases fail i doubted that so let me see exactly and this is good this is this is uh, good that uh, you know, we are coming across errors because then we can learn something out of this, right? Exactly the same problem that um, in here, the, the value after this decimal was zero. That's why it did not create much of an issue. But in here, if you see the value after the decimal is a slightly like longer one. And this one is rounding it up actually. So the expected output is actually it is rounding up the value after the decimal position to uh, like a one one digit after the decimal position. That's what it is rounding it off, rounding it off to. And my output which is being produced is like pretty long. It is taking the entire division, all the decimal digits, which come as per the division result. Fair enough. I know how to handle this. And this is again, a place where your Python knowledge, you you can you can uh, shine with your Python knowledge, a way to kind of flex your Python knowledge. So there is a function and I know because of the Python knowledge that I have gained, I know that there is a function which can take care of this, which can round off my results. Essentially, I have to just I have to just round off the results. This forecasted revenue, which I have got, I can use a round function here. I can use a round function. And to that, I will pass this forecasted revenue. I will ask it that round off to one digit after decimal point. That's the intention of what I'm trying to say. This should solve it. You can either, in fact, you can give the round function here itself, keeping the code clean, keeping it much readable. I will give it here. First, let me just test quickly by running this code. This should work. My code produces this. Fair enough. Okay. And this one is this. Okay. And now I will go ahead and submit my solution. Great. This one passes. And uh, as expected, yeah, this my my output also gets rounded off after one uh, up to one digit after decimal. So that's the entire code. That's how we can solve this question. It's a pretty good question. You can you could see. It's tested by algorithmic knowledge, the way I build up the logic, the way I explain the logic, and the way I think about problem solving. It tested my data structures knowledge. I was able to present an appropriate data structure, the list here, and I was able to kind of append my results to that. Finally, I got a chance to showcase my Python related knowledge, the best programming practices also I was able to showcase by taking care of uh, edge conditions, utilizing some Python specific functions, that all sums up or that all shows why this is a pretty good question. Test someone for who is applying for a data engineer position, a data scientist, very much for sure. Very good question to test your skills on problem solving, Python programs or coding practices. So this is a pretty well-rounded problem. And I am pretty sure that if you go through this, uh, or if you practice these kind of questions, you will be very much equipped to face that coding round. Uh, for whichever role you are applying for. In case you are interested to explore similar questions and get the best preparation out there for your data related profiles that you will be applying for, check out interviewquery.com, which has lo loads of such question, which have loads of such similar scenario and uh, other, I would say other rounds also that you can explore questions related to that, that and best preparation materials. Go ahead and explore interviewquery.com and you will have the best preparation out there what you can do for your upcoming interviews that's all from my side here is me ravi signing off i'll see you in some other video